welcome. Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to use AWS DevOps services like AWS Code Commit, AWS Code Build, and AWS Code Pipeline with a very simple Java web application project. I have designed this particular demo to have five phases. In phase one, I'll be creating some preparatory task. I'll be just setting up everything fine. Uh, I'll be creating S3 bucket for the build artifact. Then I will check if I have an existing IAM user or I will create a new IAM user uh, with set of privileges that allows him or her to use uh, AWS DevOps services. Then we'll generate the Git and HTTP credentials. Here I'm going to just assign this user a power user permissions on uh, AWS DevOps services. Generate the Git HTTP credentials for the same user. This is just a kind of prerequisite setup. Then in phase two, I will log in into my AWS console using an IAM user. Right now I have logged in with my root user. This is my root username, my Then I'll create code commit repository. Then I will clone it to my local uh, machine on my local system in uh, my current file system, local file system. After I have copied entire software, a uh, entire project, I will then create one extension, EB extension directly with fixed path module that will help me later with Elastic Beanstalk deployment. Commit all the changes, register to the remote repository, register the remote repository, code commit repository, and push all changes to code commit on the local machine. Then in phase three, I'm going to create code build project. Then uh, I'll define a build spec file or I will create a new build spec for the Mavenized project. I will also make sure that my project after it is built, it will publish all the build artifacts to S3 bucket that I have created in phase one. And then finally, phase four, I will create a Tomcat based web app using AWS Elastic Beanstalk and test with the default sample app. Phase five, the final one, here is uh, I, I'm going to create AWS code pipeline for deploying the application to this particular elastic pin stock. So let's get started now. We are in phase one. So let's do one thing quickly. I'll just create one S3 bucket. So if you have already logged in into AWS console, you can just head over to S3 services, S3 console. And uh, from S3 console, let's create a new S3 bucket. I don't have any bucket created right now. So let's create a new bucket. So I want my bucket to be called, let's say DevOps bucket. This is the region which I have selected here, East US, that's fine. And uh, I'm just going to use a CL disable for, right, uh, for the time being right now. Block all public access. You can enable the bucket versioning <coughs> that will allow you to have multiple build artifact like build artifact version 1, version 2, version 3 in the same bucket. It will also work fine without enabling bucket versioning. Your code build will work just fine. I don't want any server side encryption, the option I will keep it disabled for a time being and create the bucket. Just wait. It is getting created now. What I will do next, I will either create a new IAM user or I will use an existing IAM user. Let's see. I'll do one thing. I'll create a new IAM user here. So let's search for IAM. AWS IAM is AWS Identity and Access Management Control. So let's go to IAM console. And from my IAM console, I'm just going to create a new user. So let's go to users and let's create a new user here. Just wait a minute. User is getting created now. Let's call this new user Divya. And I want this user to have access keys for programmatic access and also password for AWS console. Access keys we are actually not going to use anywhere. You need access keys only when you are planning to use AWS CLI or any other kind of development tool. 
right now we just need a password but i have selected both of them anyways instead of using auto generated passwords i am going to use my own custom password here so i have entered my password and user must create a new password i don't want that i want to continue using this password only let's go to the next screen I'm going to add some permissions to this user. I will add this user to the admins group that I have created earlier. Okay, and then uh, permission boundaries. Create user without a boundary. That's fine. <coughs> there is one more thing, by the way. This particular user is actually going to need AWS code commit pipeline access. So let's go to attach existing policies directly. Wait a second, if I do that, this changes will be discarded. Okay, that's fine. Let's change the time. Yeah. And from here, let me choose, let me choose power user. Let's see how many different policies are there with term power user in them. There are so many of them. But right now, what I need is AWS code commit power user. Can you see that? AWS code commit power user we need this next i don't need any tags let's hit the review button this is the user i'm creating now and create so new user is getting created username is divya and the user has access keys secret everything placed inside it and you will notice one thing this new user can sign in using this url so let me copy this url now and I'll do one thing, I'll open a new browser window with incognito mode so that, you know, I will have a different login there on AWS console. So my AWS username here is Divya and this is Divya's password. If you enter correct username, password and account number, you will get access to the AWS management console anyways. Now, this is my AWS management console. Rest everything I'm going to do using this particular console now, not using this one where I have logged in with my root username. So, we have done with step number one and step number two of phase one. Let's proceed with step number three where I'm going to generate Git HTTP credentials for the new user. So, this time I'm going to use this one. This is my console now. So, what I will do now. In this console, let's go to I am user once again. Wait a second, I can do that from the admin console also. That's proper, that's completely okay actually. What I will do is okay, user is already created. Let's go to the username. And for this user, let's create HTTP get credentials. So, Divya user, user called Divya, and for this user called Divya, I'm going to create security credentials. From security credentials, I will go and create HTTP Git credentials for AWS code. Here, it is actually uses uh, a secret token. Let's generate the token, and these are the details. The username is this and the password is this. Better download the credentials immediately. This will make sure that you can access them easily whenever you need. You won't be able to see this token later on. So better you download them. So there is a file downloaded over here. I can open this file in Excel or Notepad. It's a comma separated verb basically. Fine, looks like my Microsoft Excel has picked it up. And both the user ID and the access token will be visible here. We need this when we log in. Right here. Fine. Let's just minimize this. So I have done with phase one completely. I did entire phase one with my root admin account. Now in phase two, let's use I am user. I have already logged in here in I am user. Let me check. Here is my I am user. AWS Management Console with new IM user. Okay. Here you can see the login name is Divya. 
let's create a new code commit repository. For that, you will have to search for code commit from the name panel. Here it is. Let's go to AWS code commit. And from AWS code commit, what I will do now? Here is the AWS code commit. Let's create a new repository here. I'm going to call this repository as uh, Java Demo. A sample Java project. Description, you can add whatever you want. You can add tags. You can even have an optional feature of uh, creating Amazon Code Guru Reviewer. This is an optional feature. I don't want it right now. And create. This is my new Git repository on AWS Code Command. Now, it will give me these steps. What you need basically. You need to have Git installed in your machine and somewhere in your local machine, you have to clone this repository. So let me copy this and let me go to my terminal here. Okay. This is my PowerShell terminal. And from this terminal, let's think, let's go to or let's go to our repos folder or let's create a new folder anyways. Let's create a new folder in AWS demos and let's get inside AWS demos folder and this is completely new folder basically there is nothing inside it you will see it's empty <coughs> what I will do now let's use that git clone command here in my terminal when I press enter it will start cloning the repository in my local machine please remember one thing uh, what I was actually expecting here is when you do the clone it should actually open a pop-up box asking me to authenticate right? to authenticate with my uh, github access token so not github aws code commit access username and password you will you will notice one thing it didn't actually ask me any, for any credentials let me tell you the reason for that i have been using aws code commit for some time and there were already some pre-created credentials already available there so it didn't ask me for the credential sector but what I was actually expecting here, if you are doing it for the first time, it will open a browser pop-up and it will ask you to enter your username and password. Here, you will have to use this credential, this set of credentials you will have to use. Okay, fine. That's fine. Let's do one thing. Let's open whatever project you have cloned here. Let's open that project in VS Code. Next page. So that's our VS Code, the smart text editor that we will be using throughout this project. This is the smart text editor. So you will notice this is completely empty. Nothing is inside it. I have a sample code that I can copy from somewhere. Now the sample code I'm talking about is in my D drive in a git repository called CI subnet table. Oh, I'm already inside the repository. Yeah. So once I'm in CI sublet demo, this is the project. What I will do now, I'll just copy everything from this project directory and put it into my C drive AWS demos Java app demo folder. So let's copy everything there. And you will notice one thing if I switch to my VS Code environment now. This, this is my VS Code environment. All the files are there. Fine. So what I did just now, I created a local repository clone exist uh, create a local git repository copy existing marvin project let's now add one extension i'm going to create a new folder with name eb extensions and inside dot eb extensions i will create a file called fixpath.config now this is the file this is actually a yaml file uh, which requires me to create a small uh, you can say configuration now this configuration is not for the build pipeline. This configuration is actually for Elastic Beanstalk so that when this project will be deployed, it will use this 
small command. It is actually done deliberately so that as soon as root.var is copied to my Elastic Beanstalk, it will automatically extract its contents at the right place. So, this is done. Okay. Now, my code repository is ready. What is the next thing to do? Commit all the changes. You can take help of your VS Code environment itself. What I can do here, I can just, you know, commit all the changes here with a commit message. Let's commit all the changes here. Say yes. Commit. You can use command line tool, get add command, get commit command, etc. And then push the changes to the remote repository. Let's wait for the push operation to complete now. Is it done? Yes. Let's do one thing now. If I just go back to this particular AWS code commit repository now, let's try to reload the repository page. And this time you will notice that all that help information it was showing me earlier on how to clone the repository to local, all that has disappeared because this is no longer an empty repository. This repository now contains some files. And these are all the files. So I have done this part. I have done this part. Push the changes now. So I have successfully completed phase one and phase two. Let's move to phase three now. In phase three, I'm going to create a new code build project. So here we'll go in AWS console, build, and let's create a new build project. It's not authorized because, oh, 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 I got it. Looks like I have given this particular user only permissions to code commit, not to the code build. Fine, I'll fix that. Let's go back to the environment here and I'll do one thing. I will give this user one more privilege. Let's go to user Divya. This is the user. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. I have given this user AWS code commit power user permissions. Let's give further permissions here. Wait a second, I guess I should just add it to the admin group first of all. Instead of this. Admin group. Admin group, uh, this user will get access to most of the services. Add permissions. Fine. Let's see if this will fix this. Let's go to code build. Build project. Yeah, I'm now getting an access. So let's do one thing now. I'll just go and create the project here. A new code build project. Let's give it a name. The code build project name I'm going to create here is, let's say, Java build. Description I will write. A sample Maven application. Here, I'm going to say the source code for my particular project is from AWS code commit and repository is going to be Java demo repository. For Java demo repository, I'm just going to pick up the main master branch. I have a master branch in there. Latest commit for the master branch will be picked up automatically. For the build agent, I want Ubuntu server with standard runtime image, standard version 5.0 and uh, it's going to be a Linux machine. A new role has to be created to assign the right permissions, privileges, and I want to create a new build spec file. So let's use insert build command and then switch to an editor so that we will get a detailed editor screen where I can make small changes to my project. So this is the set of build commands. In the install phase, let's do one small installation activity here. What I will do is, 
For this particular project, I need Java to be installed. So which version of Java you need? I need Java version 8. Core to Java 8. Right? And there is nothing in pre-build. In build, I need a command. So a typical Maven command, MVN package, will build my project. But unfortunately for us, Maven package command will create a target folder and it will create the final build artifact. The .var file will be created inside a target folder. I will add one extra step to make sure that root.var created inside target directory will be copied instead to the parent directory. Now, there is no report but there are artifacts. So, what about artifacts? I want to get two artifacts here. I want to collect two artifacts. First one is the root.var file itself and the second one is going to be the EB extension, Elastic Beanstalk extension that I have created. So the name is EB extensions and then whatever files might be there. Double star slash uh, slash then single star. That means everything inside EB extensions folder should be picked up, all the files. That's it, my build spec file is now ready. This is the build spec file that I'm currently editing here, uh, currently using in here. Once you have done all the necessary changes here, we will then define the artifacts here. I want my artifacts to be kept in S3 bucket. You will notice a bucket has already been created by me, DevOps bucket. This is the one I created in phase one, right? This bucket we are referring to. So this bucket I will choose. You can provide the name or you can use semantic versioning. In case if you are planning to use semantic versioning, so that artifact will name uh, uh, get some unique name. I would recommend you do one thing. Go back to the artifact phase here, artifact phase here, uh, build spec command and remove this comment or uncomment this line. I want name of the artifact to be this. So artifact name, the folder that it will create under S3 will actually automatically create a name like this, year, month and day. Okay, fine. Now that everything is set here, what I will do now, it's none. I don't need any kind of compression. CloudWatch, I want all the build logs to be available to me. And finally, create the build project. You can even test run this build project. Okay, just to check whether it is able to build your project here successfully okay let's see how much time it will take for building this project now. okay uh, fine i did not click the build command build button so build project is created let's start the build build is started you can see it is in progress here and if you want you can just look the look at the build logs Use this button, tell logs, to uh, get the live logs of your build operation. It will take approximately 4 to 5 minutes only for this entire project to get built. Okay, not more than that. It's a very small uh, demo project that I have created uh, some 4 to 5 years back. Next thing is my project is not having too many third party dependencies. Just basic Java subnet API. Okay. So, the entire Maven build operation should not take more than, uh, let's say, two or three minutes max. Oh, looks like my build is completed already. You can see the current phase is showing completed. Okay, that's great. Let's close this pop-up and return to the build. And I can see here my build was already succeeded. My build is successful already. And guess what? If you look at the log here, it is saying it successfully built the project. Fine, what next then? Let's go back to the Java build, the build project name, and let's see if it has created the artifacts. So you will see the build artifacts are available at this location, DevOps bucket, the one that I created in phase one. Right now, we are in this phase. We have done the build, and we are just checking whether our artifacts are available in this S3 bucket. You see that? Yes. You will see here I'm using semantic versioning, and I have used uh, for the folder name, I'm using this uh, date. So this is today's date. 
and you will see under today's date a root dot var file has been captured. Okay, the root dot var file has been captured, and I can see it here. I guess there is some problem though. I'm not able to see that file. Wait a second, something is wrong in here. I was expecting two files here: one, uh, eb extensions, and the two root dot var. But I, I can see here only root dot var, not the eb extension. Let me check that once. What I will do is let's go back to the code build project and uh, let's edit the steps once again. I just want to see what all things I have mentioned there in the build spec file. In the build spec file, this was the build command and then this was the files that I need to collect. I wanted to collect eb extensions. Oh, I made a spelling mistake here. E B E X T E N S I O N S extensions. Okay, this has to be very perfect basically because E B E X T E N S I O N extensions. Otherwise, application will not actually you know deploy properly in Elastic uh, Beanstalk. Let's update the build spec. There is no need to run the build again because anyway when we when I will create code pipeline that time it will run anyways. Now let's go to phase four. I will. I need an application to deploy this project, right? So, what I'll do now? Let's search for Beanstalk. AWS Elastic Beanstalk, and let's create a new project for Java, Tomcat based Java web application project. Here we are now. Uh, what I will do now here? Let's create a new environment. Or let's say we are creating a new application. I'm going to create a new application. Let's call this application as HR app. A sample application for HR team. Create. Now for this particular HR app, let's create new environment. A web server environment. Here for HR app, the environment name will be HR app env. Domain HR dot Mahindra dot East US one dot. Wait, wait, wait! I can't use dot in here. Let's see if this name is available. Yeah, this name is available. That's fine. And let's give it a name. A sample web application. I want to use a managed platform for the application where it will be using a Tomcat based Java web application. Version of Tomcat I can use is Tomcat 8.5 with Core 8.8 or Core 8.11. My project is built with Core 8.8, but believe me, the CI sublet demo, the one that I'm using right now, is also compatible with Java 11. That is Core 8.11. Fine. Let's keep it as close to the source code. Sample application. Anyway, I'm going to change this through the pipeline. For a time being now, let's say sample application. By the way, it is also possible to choose your S3 bucket right now. You can do that. I will not do that right now. Sample application. Let's wait for the environment creation. It might take approximately two to three minutes for environment to be ready. So we'll wait. Okay. So. I have created this project. Now I am going to test the sample application once it is ready. Let's wait for it. So looks like it has created the uh, the required EC2 instances behind the scene. I guess I made a mistake here. I should have uh, went to the advanced setting and selected a single instance application. This looks like it is creating a multi-instance application complete with Elastic Load Balancer and all. That's fine. Project will work just fine. No worries. Okay. But only thing is, it will take uh, one or two extra minutes to provision this environment now. So yeah. behind the scene, it is going to use Security Group, then uh, Elastic Load Balancer. I guess if I'm not wrong, it has to create uh, Auto Scaling Group as well. This is now setting up. The health groups. Right. Okay, it's taking some time. 
Okay. So looks like it has created the auto scaling group policy, cloud watch alarm. Okay, fine. So it's nearly done now. Might take just a couple of seconds more uh, for the application to get ready. Okay. Looks like it has created a load balancer also. Yeah, load balancing rule has been created now because uh, I did not choose single instance option. This is going to increase the cost. Okay, looks like instance deployment has completed successfully, but it will take few seconds for me to, you know, go to the final success page here. Okay. Adding an instance. Yeah. So environment is successfully launched now. And the entire process took only two minutes basically. Fine. <laughs> So now that environment is ready, I should be able to, uh, you know, kind of test the environment. So environment is loading now. Okay, that's great. Let us test run this project. This is the actual URL. Let's visit the actual URL and see if the project is working just fine. Yes, this is the default AWS default page. Now, we are going to replace this with my actual application, real application. And for that, now we are going to start with phase 5, which is the last phase where we will create AWS Core Pipeline. So let's go back to the AWS console here and we will go back to AWS Core Pipeline. So let's search for pipeline in an AWS console and uh, from the pipeline, let's create a new AWS code pipeline for the deployment. So here, let's give it a name. Let's call it HR app deploy. A new role will be created and added to my current user. Next, source provider. My entire source code is from AWS code commit repository. So let's select the code repository name and let's choose the branch name, which is master branch. I will trigger this pipeline uh, with AWS code pipeline uh, trigger that will periodically check if there are any changes detected in your uh, code commit repository and if there are any changes it will run this pipeline. Code pipeline default artifact format. Next. Build provider I will use AWS code build and this is the AWS code build project project Java build and this is going to be a single build. Next. Now the last step is where you provide the deployment credentials or deployment. Here we are going to deploy it to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Let's select the application that I have created. I have created an application called HR app and for HR app, the environment name is HR app ENV, the one that I have created recently. That's it. So now this is my core pipeline. For my core pipeline, the first portion, or sorry, the first setting or first section is source code. Source code I have provided AWS code commit repository. Second, I have provided build, AWS code build project. And third, I have provided deploy action to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Let's hit the create pipeline button and see the pipeline now. I'm looking at the pipeline creation screen. Let's wait for it to show me the uh, pipeline. Yeah. Pipeline creation is successful. Here is the pipeline and looks like immediately the pipeline has also started its execution. It's getting the source code from the source code repository. You can see it here. It says in progress and uh, once it is succeeded, it will then transition to the build step where it is using this build. You can click on the detail button to check the detail uh, build log. Build is going on. These are the page details. Right now it has submitted the request, added it to the build queue, provisioning the required servers, build servers, and then it will proceed with the next step. Yeah, done. Wow. Done the necessary installation for Java Core 8.8. Pre-build, I did not actually add anything to pre-build. The main step here is build. Okay, build done. Good. Now, now let's just go back to the Gold pipeline. So in core pipeline, you will see the first and second step is complete. 
Okay, second step is not complete practically, it's still going on. And once this one is over, it will then transition to the diploma. Let's wait for it. It's, still, yeah, it's done now. The build part is done and now it has triggered the deployment. This is the deployment. If you want to see the details of the deployment process, you can just click on the pipeline execution menu. This is where you will see the deployment logs. So deployment is going on right now. And if you look at the timeline here, uh, you have done with the source, built, and now you are in a deploy state. This is the visualization graph. And uh, wait a second, I was, I was waiting for, I, I was looking for the actual logs. Artifacts have built already. Deployment is still going on. Okay. Yeah. Just wait a few couple of seconds for the deployment. And once deployment is done, we will go and check this app. Instead of this default welcome page, we will get yeah, it's done already. My deployment is completely done. And this is my sample project. Okay. This is the sample project that I have. And I'm able to access this application from my Elastic Teams file. This is how you use AWS DevOps services. Okay. And with this, we end the entire demo. Now, one last final piece that I would like to add here. The cleanup activity. How will you do a cleanup? How will I delete all these things? Because this is going to actually <coughs> result in some charges for using all those services. So, I will go step by step. Number one, let's remove all the DevOps services, including pipeline. So I will delete the pipeline first. I don't know what happened to this. Okay, we'll delete it from here instead pipelines and I will just delete the pipeline I'll delete s3 bucket I will delete code commit repository okay so this is how you delete them deleting pipeline is easy just select the pipeline and hit delete button done. let's go back to developer tools and let's delete the code build build project so here is the build project select it and delete it. Just have to type delete in the text box and press delete. Let's go to the source code repository and let's delete the source code repository as well. Delete the source code repository. Then let's go to the S3 bucket. And let's delete the S3 bucket that I have created for this particular project. Just give me a second. Yeah, S3 bucket is getting loaded. There is a possibility that this S3 bucket will not actually allow you to delete anything. This S3 bucket I was talking about. So first empty the bucket. So Empty bucket means you will have to, or you are just trying to. Permanently delete all the contents of the bucket and make the bucket empty and then try to delete the bucket. In case if you get permission error, I will show you how to, you know, kind of delete it. DevOps bucket. Sorry. Just start to write the bucket new again. Buckets. Yeah, it's deleted successfully. That's great. There are two other buckets which are created by uh, this pipeline. One is code pipeline bucket and the other one is elastic beanstalk bucket. So let's empty the code pipeline bucket. So 
permanently delete all the contents of this bucket and then delete this bucket also. Now I am too lazy to type the bucket name, so I will copy and paste it instead. Then this elastic bean stock. For elastic bean stock, let's empty it first. Permanently delete. Empty it. And now delete. And once this is deleted, the last thing to delete is the app and app environment. That I'll delete. Looks like I don't have permissions to delete this particular bucket. I was expecting this error in at least one bucket. Anyways. I'll show you how to do that. How to make it possible to delete this bucket. Go to the permissions tab and click on the edit bucket policy. And in edit bucket policy, there is a policy created uh, that will deny the delete access. So let's delete this section of the policy. Make sure that you are deleting the comma at line number 29 as well. Okay, so that this entire section I'm deleting from here. And then save the changes to the policy. Now, policy will not restrict or policy will not stop me from deleting this particular bucket. Let's delete this bucket. Name of the bucket, I'll just copy and paste it here and delete it. Okay, so after all the buckets deleted, let's go and delete the beanstalk. Elastic beanstalk. And let's delete that as well. We will have to delete the app and environment too. So this is the HR app I was looking at. And uh, let's delete the environment. Name of environment is this. Let me copy and paste the environment name and terminate. Environment is getting terminated now. There was a, some other environment I had created earlier. I'll delete that as well. Keeping the environment in your AWS console will actually result in cost. In the charges. I want to avoid or I want to you know kind of keep the charges to me. That's why I'm deleting all my apps and environments. Okay. Let's see if the environment is now already deleted. Okay, environment is getting terminated now. Fine, that's great. That is what I was expecting. So that's for it. I have deleted everything now in this final phase. Thank you very much.